So navigation. Uh, this is where uh, you kind of need to start really intensely focusing. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw out some jargon terms, some terminology that you need to know. Um, and then from this point forward, I'm going to be using those terms to describe things that we're doing. So this is the crux upon which the entire class is formed. Ooh. All right. So uh, first and foremost, the one on the left, that's called params. Okay. I mentioned a word earlier in my description of the class um, called uh, parametric. And for those of you who are familiar with parametric design, you know that it's built out of what's called parameters. And the params here are essentially a, um, how do I want to describe it? It's basically like a nullified housing for information that's representative of those parameters. So while your height parameter of a box may in one case be 10, it theoretically could be anything. And so these params sort of fill that void, right? So what that means is if I have a line, right? This line, I drop it in and um, it, it looks very simple. It doesn't have as many inputs and outputs as, as the ones before. Um, that's because this line, it just, wow, huh. that's funny, it's a typo. Um, it contains a collection of line segments. It contains a collection of line segments. But then underneath it says empty line parameter. So this line component can be any lines that you either designate it to be or feed it on the input side. Okay? So think of those params as being sort of like a, almost like a utility section for, for, um, for either converting or passing information. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but anyway, that's the role that params plays. Um, for uh, description purposes, I'm gonna stretch this out so you can see more of the commands. But anyway, um, we have geometry params, and if you click on the black bar, you'll see that it extends downward, those aren't the only params in the ribbon. There are plenty more. And, and don't worry about how many commands there are in this program. There are a ton of them, um, and it keeps growing. Um, there are a few key ones that you will get to know through experience. Okay, so don't be intimidated. Um, anyway, so there are geometry params, which are specific to the types of geometrical data that's passed through. And then there are primitives. So primitives are important because they basically will construct the geometrical data, if that makes any sense. So if you think about a line, a line is built out of uh, a connection between two points. Furthermore, two points are constructed off of three, um, three positions in space, three axial positions, the x, the y, and the z axis coordinate. Okay, so those would be your primitives, the actual numbers that create the point, that create the line. Does that make sense? All right. No? no? Um, I'm trying to think of a better metaphor, but I, you'll see when we build it, I think. Okay, yeah. When, because, because literally, like, basically, the, when we build this thing, you'll see that it is a diagram for exactly what I just said. Okay. So um, then there are these other things which are more, it gets more dynamic, these input values. Um, you have things like sliders, toggles, buttons, you have a clock, uh, colors, and stuff like that. It's, we're going to use these in different ways, but they're more utilitarian, not quite so uh, primitive. <coughs> um, and then more utilities, kind of the same sort of stuff. But um, the things that we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of jump back and forth between a few things and, and show you some similarities that you must know about. Uh, here, you're, you're kind of thinking right now, like, oh, we're gonna build things out of this, right? And those things in Rhino, we create them with curves and surfaces. Well, you've got them right here, curve and surface, right? Um, <coughs> curve and surface are, are very similar in, in how the tools are laid out and you really should know both primary parts of this. And that would be that there are analytical components and there are um, 
basically like construction components, like geometrical components that create things. So analytical components read information. The construction, primitive, you know, splines and curves and stuff like that create geometry. Okay, very clear de delineation between the two. So that's generally present under curves and surfaces. And I think there are some analytical ones under mesh. Um, yeah, that, that might be kind of the only ones, but this doesn't really have analytical. Those are sort of inherently analytical. But anyway, um, so curves and surfaces, right? You've got, you've got your reading information and you have your constructing information. So why is this important and why am I spending so much time on it? <clears throat> the reason it has these two things is because the, the entire workflow upon which Grasshopper is built is that you're constantly constructing geometry and then you're deconstructing geometry to pick and choose bits and pieces of it that you either want to replicate, modify, delete, uh, duplicate, whatever it is. You want to change this information in some way and then you reconstruct geometry. Okay, so remember that more than anything else tonight but remember everything else too okay deconstruct um, and reconstruct geometry okay or rather construct geometry deconstruct geometry and reconstruct geometry we're just going to do that basically you're going to do that thousands of times by the time we're done this class okay all right um so without getting into too much of, of what's here, I'm, I'm just going to kind of, you know, briefly show you some things. We have mathematical operators so that we can modify those numbers in dynamic ways, uh, trigonometric functions, um, and you have calculus uh, features in here, anything that you could really need mathematically. Sets is how you organize and structure information, which we're going to talk a lot about. Um, vector information is like points and relocations, uh, orders of magnitude, <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, intersections are all of your like Boolean operations that you see in that you've that you've all used in Rhino. Um, transforms are kind of the same way. Most of your typical Rhino functions. Uh, displays are analytical. These are the stuff that happens from display over. Those are all add-ins, all of them. And generally, we don't touch those until later, okay? But I'll show you sort of what's there. Um, Honeybee is a, an environmental analysis plugin. So you'll see that it has all these really cool, colorful icons. Usually, you know, like, you plug in weather data, and it can actually, like, analyze the solar heat gain on your building from different incident sun angles and stuff like that. It's really dynamic. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it'll draw the sun path for you. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want, I could probably, sh like, later on, a couple weeks or so, I can show you real quickly if you need it for design. Um, oh, Weaver Bird. I don't really use Weaver Bird, but it's a dynamic geometry generator. Uh, same thing with paneling tools. Uh, it has to do a lot with, like, assemblies and, obviously, panelization of surfaces. Kangaroo's cool. Um, you guys should know about Kangaroo because it incorporates actual physics engines. So you can do like animations where you have um, like uh, warped surfaces that are kind of, you know, falling with the weight of gravity and then it finds its uh, equilibrium and stuff like that. Super cool stuff. I might be able to show you some of that now that we actually have it here. Uh, ladybug goes hand in hand with honeybee environmental analysis and uh, I don't really know what these are. They're new to me. Okay. Questions on user interface. Kind of get it? You sort of understand what's there? All right. Don't worry. When we start to build it, you'll kind of understand how what role they play. Okay? 